Minister, and he was treated so unfairly. Could I ask Congressman Admiral Doctor? He's a doctor. He was my White House doctor. He was Obama's White House doctor and Bush's White House doctor. He was also an admiral. So he was an admiral and a doctor. Then he became the doctor in the White House. And you know when I fell in love with him? They said, who's the healthiest? He, he took care of Bush, Obama. Did anybody ever hear of Barack Hussein Obama? Yes. Took care of Obama. And he took care of Trump. And they said, who's the healthiest of those presidents? And he said, without question, it's Donald J. Trump. And I said, I love this guy. Ronnie Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Howdy, Montana, from the great state of Texas. All right. Look, I want to tell you a little bit about this man, John Tester, this man who says that he represents Montana in the Senate, this man who tells you that he's up there trying to clean the place up and trying to fix what's broken. This man is a sleazy, disgusting, swamp politician. He's a fraud and he's a liar. I was in the Navy for 25 years. For 25 years, I was on active duty serving my country. I was an emergency medicine physician, right? I went to Iraq with the United States Marine Corps to a surgical shock trauma platoon on the battlefield between Fallujah and Ramadi. I spent the last 14 years of my career in the Navy on active duty at the White House, serving three presidential administrations and taking care of three presidents, including the best president this country's ever had, Donald J. Trump. I had a spotless, spotless, flawless career in the Navy. I had never had a single complaint about anything. I was a Navy Rear Admiral. And at the end of my time in the military, while I was still on active duty, President Trump had the trust and confidence in me to nominate me as the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, which I was, I was happy to. However, let me tell you, John Tester at that time was the ranking member on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. He was gonna oversee that process. He was also up for re-election. It was 2018. He decided that it was in his political best interest and would help his election if he, could, if he could come out and be the guy that tore down one of Donald Trump's cabinet nominees. He came after me. He tried to destroy me. He tried to destroy my family. He got together with some disgruntled employees that worked for me at the White House who were upset because they didn't get promoted or get something they wanted during their time at the White House. One of them, in fact, is currently Joe Biden's doctor. They, can, they got together with him and his staff and they made up completely absurd accusations and lies about me to tear down my nomination. They said that I, he, he labeled me on TV as the candy man, right? He said that I was recklessly prescribing narcotics. I can tell you, I can count right here on this hand right here, how many times I prescribed narcotics at the White House in 14 years. He put that out there. He said that I got drunk and wrecked a government vehicle. Any two-bit investigator can figure out whether or not that happened. He knew it didn't happen. He knew it, and it's been proven that it didn't happen since then. He did not care. He was going to destroy me to better his career, and he passed that information to these morons in the back right? The mainstream media, who were all too willing to carry this water. And let me tell you, they don't work for you. They work for swamp creatures like John Tester. That's who they work for. Anyways, look, this man tried to destroy me. He tried to destroy my family. I've been waiting for six years to get back here for this night, to be with this man right here, to come after him. The end of John Tester starts tonight. And it starts by bringing this man back to the White House so that he can continue the work that he did draining the swamp when he was a president before. He's the best president we've ever had, and he's the only one that can do the job now. So get him back into office.
The next thing we're going to do, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring Tim Sheehy to the Senate to replace this swamp hippopotamus, John Tester. So I want to thank you all for coming out and for showing your support and your willingness to help us take this country back. We've got 87 days left. Let's get it done. Great job. Great job. Other than that, he likes him very much. But I was a part, uh, look, I was, I maybe blame myself. I said to he was a great admiral, highly respected the Navy. He was a great White House doctor. So you have two, you have leadership and you have the doctors. So I figured out what's better for the VA. So I went to Ronnie and I said, Ronnie, what do you think of the possibility of you running the VA? You're a great leader. You're a great admiral, highly respected in the Navy. A war veteran, everything. He had everything you could have. And on top of that, he's a great doctor, a great man, a great personality. Everyone loves him. And, you know, I went to him. I said, what do you think? And he didn't want it. He said, sir, I'd rather not. But he's an incredible patriot. He said, but if you want me to do it, because he was ready to retire and go on to move to Texas and do whatever he was going to do. He said, if you want me to do it, sir, I'll do it. He didn't want to do it. Everybody else would want it. But he really would have preferred not. I said, Ronnie, you know, I did him such a great favor. Ronnie, you'll be great. So I let it out that I'd like to put Ron. I didn't even put it out officially. I let it out to the fake news. I said, I'd like to put Ronnie in as the head of the Veterans Administration. And that's when Tester hit. And it was vicious. It was vicious. It was really. And I didn't even say it. You know, I mean, I, after it happened, I said, Ronnie, it's really unfair. And, you know, they sent out people, and we did too, to investigate every charge this slob made. And every charge was totally false. And he has an incredible family, an incredible wife. He has a son. I was making the commencement address at Annapolis. His son was one of the best students at Annapolis, right at the top of the class. And I had a look at the son. And I had to say, what they're doing to your father is really unfair. This is one of the finest men you'll ever see. And that John Tester couldn't have cared less. He just wanted publicity for himself. And it's a disgrace. You have to defeat John Tester, I'm telling you.